Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Well, it seems like a lot of you guys were interested in us coming back and tucking the rest of the graphical options in Red Dead Redemption 2's PC port. So, well, here we are with part two of our optimization guide. If you missed part one, I'd highly recommend watching that first as we go through all of the basic graphics options in the game there. In fact, by dropping a few settings down to medium, often resulting in next to no quality loss, I was able to achieve around a 40 to 50% improvement to frame rates compared to the game running with all ultra settings. Given the lackluster performance when maxed out, using the optimized settings we showed in part one definitely allows gamers to get better frame rates while still being able to enjoy the beauty of the Red Dead Redemption 2 game world. And since putting in the work for part one of the video, I've played even more of Red Dead Redemption 2 and it's even more beautiful than I first expected, especially now that I can achieve above 60 FPS in most instances. Unfortunately, when putting together this part of the video, I ran into even more crashes than ever before, especially when changing some of the advanced graphics options that we'll be working through today. The game seems to just have a ton of issues, and given we're now more than a week post-launch, this is especially disappointing. Now, I don't expect everything to get fixed right away, and it seems some of the most pressing problems with launching the game have been cleared up a bit since day one, but for a 60-hour game to crash pretty regularly, it's going to be very frustrating for not just me having to test this beast, but for everyone actually trying to play it through. Anyway, enough about that. In this part two of our Red Dead Redemption 2 optimization videos, I'll be going through and covering the rest of the graphics options in the game. So everything that's in the advanced section. 20 individual options here is pretty crazy, hence why we cut it out of the first video to save it being extremely long. And to have this many options on top of the basic settings is pretty mind blowing. Maybe Rockstar should have cut down a few of these options and just spent time fixing the game and making sure it worked properly. I don't know. Anyway, most of the stuff from the previous video still applies here. So we're still testing with a variety of AMD and Nvidia GPUs and to cut out all CPU bottlenecks, we've tested with the Core i9 9900 and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Again, most people will be playing this game GPU bottlenecked, so these results will be generally representative of gaming on CPUs like a Ryzen 5 2600 with something like a GTX 1660 or RTX 2060. Our benchmark runs come mostly from the final scene of the built-in benchmark tool, which takes you through a scene in Saint Denis, which is the most performance intensive area of the game I've found so far. However, for a few tests such as for water quality, we use some custom in-game runs as they're more representative of those effects, and we'll let you know when we run into them. Captures are still being taken on the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super at 1440p. The scenes we use for visual comparisons don't represent the areas we benchmark with, but we use benchmark runs as they give a more general overview of how individual settings affect gameplay. Spot checks can be useful, but entire benchmark runs, I feel, are a bit more accurate and representative of your gaming experience. One thing I will say about part two though is that I ran into many more crashing issues as I mentioned before, mostly when trying to get some of the visual comparisons done, so I don't quite have as many comparisons to show you in this video unfortunately. All the benchmarking was pretty straightforward though, so we are all good on that front. I'm also continuing to use all ultra settings as baseline for this testing, so everything maxed out with the exception of FXAA and MSAA which are disabled, water physics quality which is set at three quarters of a full bar, and reflection MSAA which is set to to four times. At the end I'll be combining these gains with what we got previously to give a final picture of optimized Red Dead 2 performance. What I will say before I get into it though is that generally speaking the advanced settings don't deliver as significant performance gains as we saw with the basic settings for things like reflections and light quality. We can definitely gain some more performance here but don't expect another 40% to be had. However in some situations we can actually improve visual quality as we can dive further into tweaking volumetrics and water for example. This is because the settings for volumetric quality and water quality are linked between the basic and advanced settings. So when you adjust volumetric quality for example it turns down three or four of the advanced settings that correspond to that option. Same with water quality. With some fine tuning there we can restore visual quality that we cut back previously with pretty minimal performance impact. Let's start with near volumetric resolution. The name tells you all you need to know here. It affects the render resolution of volumetric effects like fog and clouds when these effects are near the camera. Honestly, it didn't spot much of a visual difference between these settings in areas with heavy use of volumetrics, similar to what we saw with the basic volumetrics quality option in part one of our guide. Given that when looking at performance, we're going to gain about 7% moving from ultra to low, this is a safe bet to make and will give you much better performance in most areas of the game, given Red Dead's heavy use of volumetric fog and other volumetric effects. 
Far volumetric resolution is similar to the setting we've just been looking at, but for distant fog elements. This doesn't have anywhere near the same performance impact as near volumetrics, but it's a similar story visually. I just really can't tell the difference. Even in areas where I was definitely getting a performance impact from changing these settings, the quality impact is pretty negligible. Performance wise, you'll get a 1% improvement shifting far volumetrics from ultra to medium seems the most obvious choice to make here. For volumetric lighting quality, I chose to benchmark the game in a section that provided lots of light shafts to get a good look at how this setting impacts performance and visuals. There's quite a stark difference in light shaft resolution when you switch this setting from ultra or high to medium or low. Not much of a difference between ultra and high, but as soon as you step it down to medium, there is a significant drop off in visuals. Surprisingly, you don't need to push this setting down to medium to get a big performance gain. Opting for high instead allows us to retain excellent light shaft quality while gaining a 3% improvement to performance over ultra in areas with significant amounts of light shafts. Unlocked volumetric ray march resolution is supposedly a feature that when enabled improves the quality of clouds. I spotted a very minor difference in cloud quality with this setting enabled versus disabled. Perhaps this has a big impact at higher resolutions. It also had a negligible impact to performance. I'd probably keep this one enabled unless you have lower end hardware. Particle lighting quality. This is another setting I struggled to spot the differences with in some limited testing. I took a bunch of comparisons, but this is really as good as any of them. Can't really see the changes here. If you switch down from ultra to medium, you'll gain a small but ultimately negligible amount of performance. Although given I couldn't see any differences, I mean, you may as well switch it down. Soft Shadows is another one of those self-explanatory settings. This governs the game's distance-based shadowing, giving shadows softer edges as the shadow is further away from the source, as you see in real life. Each of the three main options here gives less accurate and less defined edges, while turning Soft Shadows off entirely delivers sharp shadow edges. Off isn't a bad setting choice, but medium seems quite low resolution, even with ultra shadow quality. For most gamers, I'd recommend using the high mode here. You'll gain around 1.5% to your frame rate Turning off soft shadows didn't provide much of an additional advantage, so unless you prefer the look of sharper shadows, I'd keep this setting enabled. Grass shadows is a subtle effect that adds to the depth and realism of the foliage throughout the game world. It works similarly to far shadows in that grass shadows are never super defined and even on the lower settings there are still some form of grass shadows visible. As you increase the option, grass shadows get slightly more dense and accurate. Low is probably the biggest downgrade while it's difficult to tell how medium differs from high when you're moving around. Given using medium shadows brings with it a 1-2% to performance improvement, I think it's a good way to slightly improve your frame rate without drastically degrading the visual experience. It's a good pairing for the high shadow modes that we've been using so far. Long shadows provide, you guessed it, long shadows during the dawn and dusk periods of the game when the sun is rising and setting. It's a simple switch here, these shadows are either enabled or disabled, and the difference is pretty obvious visually. However, I didn't spot much of a change to performance. Seems these shadows have a near negligible impact even in areas where they're very obviously enabled, so I would definitely keep this setting enabled. One of the PC specific options in Red Dead Redemption 2 is full resolution screen space ambient occlusion. This improves the resolution of the ambient occlusion effect used throughout the game, giving it a more realistic and accurate look. However, the difference between on and off is extremely subtle and something you probably won't notice most of the time unless you're playing spot the difference like I've been doing the past week or so. Enabling full resolution SSAO hurts performance to the tune of 3-4%, which definitely doesn't justify the small visual improvement. So I'd leave this setting off and enjoy the ultra quality SSAO we decided to use previously. I'm glad Red Dead allows you to more closely adjust the water effects in the game given how performance intensive the basic water quality option is. Here we have a split between refraction, reflection and physics. Refraction is a surprisingly demanding effect and it has almost no impact to visuals as far as I can tell. Looking straight down at the water here, yep, there is a small change to the resolution of refractions, but this sort of angle isn't one you'll normally be using in the game. You're not gonna run around with your head pointed at the ground. However, it has a significant impact to performance. I spotted a 7% performance impact switching from high to medium. This goes a long way to explaining why high water quality is so demanding. I'd very easily switch this to medium and bank the extra frames. What I would do though is keep reflections on high. One of the main reasons I thought the high water quality option looked so good is because of these reflections. High just looks so crisp and clear, while medium and low look increasingly more muddy and translucent. It's one of those settings that may be subtle to some, but I find high to be much better than the other options.
Given water reflections is the least demanding water setting, you'll only gain about 1-2% to switching down to medium reflections, I'd keep this on high and enjoy nearly the same visual fidelity as the overall high water quality option we looked in the last video, just without the performance cost. Next we get to water physics. There's a reason this is only set to 3 quarters full by default. Pushing it up to maximum absolutely tanks your frame rate near water for only a minor upgrade to the water simulation quality. Generally speaking, this setting impacts the quality of the wave simulation, the amount of waves and intensity, all that sort of thing. With a 3-5% performance gain to be had switching this setting to half with diminishing returns after that, the obvious choice for water physics is the halfway point. Next up we have two settings that won't surprise anyone. TAA sharpening has no performance impact, this is a personal preference setting. Then we have motion blur, we all know what this does, and you can gain 1.5% to your frame rate by disabling it. I suspect given the PC gaming community's general hate for motion blur, this will be a pretty easy performance gain here. Reflection MSAA is a bit of an enigma in that I didn't spot much of a difference between the anti-aliasing modes for reflections in both windows and mirrors. Even using the high quality ultra reflections, there's just not much of a difference. Performance is also linked to the overall reflection quality you use. If you are using ultra reflections, Reflection MSAA is much more performance intensive. You can gain 3% from turning this down to times 2 from times 4, but you'll lose 6% if you switch it up to 8 times. The differences are more modest with my recommended medium reflections, although I drop this down to 2 times for a slight improvement during mirror usage, which isn't really captured in this benchmark run. Unfortunately, Red Dead kept crashing constantly when I was testing geometry level of detail, so I couldn't get a really good comparison here. The differences between them appear to be quite minor though, I'd probably drop this down to 3 out of 5 bars to gain 1% to frame rate. Grass level of detail is also quite a subtle effect, excluding time of day changes and shadowing, which this setting doesn't really impact. Grass draw distances do change subtly, but not by a huge amount. I'd recommend using a 4 out of 10 slider setting here, given you can gain a small amount of performance for a negligible visual difference. What about tree quality? Well, as you move down this setting, there is a slight impact to tree quality and draw distances, especially at the medium and low modes. But given the amount of trees in the game world, especially in the forests, this setting has a surprisingly low impact and perhaps could have cut down foliage further to improve performance on lower end systems. With high tree quality providing a small performance advantage for basically no visual change, it's my recommendation here, although the changes aren't massive. Parallax occlusion mapping quality affects the quality of terrain, especially the footprints and cart tracks that are generated throughout the world. These simple effects add a lot to the realism of the game world, and parallax occlusion mapping gives them increased depth and texture. I only really saw a visual difference here on medium, and especially low, which makes the game world look much flatter. Given you only really start to see a performance difference dropping down to low, this is another setting I'd leave on ultra. Similar with decal quality, only a minor performance difference if you swap down to medium for a decent reduction to decal amount, although again, couldn't really get good footage for this one, another setting I'd leave on ultra. Finally, we come to fur quality. One of the great benefits PC gamers have in Red Dead Redemption 2 is high quality fur for the animals throughout the game world. It's only when switching down from high to medium do you really see how average the medium fur looks. High is much denser and less aliased thanks to a much higher sample count for the strands. I saw basically no performance impact either with mid-range and higher end GPUs, so I'd keep this on high. Lower end gamers might want to experiment with this setting to see if it has a further impact, but given fur isn't on the screen all that often, maybe just boost this up to high for the great visuals anyway. So that's all the advanced settings you can find in Red Dead Redemption 2. Unlike with the basic options, there are no massive performance gains to be had here, aside from the settings that are already linked to basic options like volumetrics and water. However, with some tweaking, we can improve the quality of those effects for limited performance impacts. And in turning down other settings like full resolution SSAO, we can make small gains across the board. Here are my final optimized settings for this game. Not going to go through and read all of these out because there are so many settings, but if you are configuring the game yourself, might be a good idea to pause here and make some adjustments. The good news is we can keep many settings enabled or on high quality levels, even the advanced settings, which keeps the game looking great overall. What does the final performance impact look like? Well, with our final settings compared to everything on Ultra, we're looking at a 65% performance increase, although the bulk of that came from previous tweaking. As I said, diving into the advanced settings only delivers modest gains, we're seeing 10-15% to here, but in pushing up a few of the other settings in the process, especially water reflections, I think the final result is pretty decent. What does this look like in terms of raw numbers? Well, with my RTX 2080 Super, I was getting about 50 FPS with Ultra settings, 
Now I'm at 84 FPS, which is very much in line with other modern graphically intensive titles. That's about what I get in games like Metro Exodus or Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Ultra settings. I'd say all three of those games look excellent as configured. Naturally, you can push up Red Dead even further, but when optimized, this is still a stunning game, and now it just runs at an acceptable frame rate. You will have seen plenty of quality comparisons at this point, both in this video and in part one, so it's safe to say we've been able to achieve this sort of performance improvement with a minor, often negligible impact to visuals. Sure, you could nitpick and look closely at areas that have been downgraded and spot some differences to reflections and especially lighting at night, but during the day, having an extra 30 FPS to play with is worth the small graphics impact. It's also worth pointing out a few other tips I've picked up along the way. A lot of people commented on the first video and have been talking about using async compute to improve Vulkan performance, particularly the stuttering issue that has been plaguing some users. Fortunately for me, I haven't experienced much stuttering during the game, even using Vulkan, although DirectX 12 has been slightly better for my system. Unfortunately, this means I can't really test the benefits of enabling ASIC compute as it can't fix a problem I don't have, but I thought I should mention it here anyway, just in case it helps for you. To enable async compute, you'll need to find your system.xml file as async compute is a hidden feature. That's typically found in the Rockstar Games folder in Documents, under Red Dead Redemption 2, and then the Settings folder. In there, you can search for async and switch it from false to true. I generally only recommend this on cards that have decent async compute capabilities, like Nvidia's Truing lineup or recent generations from AMD. The other thing I found helped quite a bit is not running the game in borderless windowed mode like I usually do, but rather in the standard full screen mode. This helped cut down some minor stuttering for me, but overall the game seems like a big mess with widely varying results depending on your system and configuration, so not sure how useful those tips will be. If you haven't bought Red Dead Redemption 2 yet, and for whatever reason you've made it through to the end of a two-part series specifically talking about the game's graphics, I'd actually recommend you don't buy it until some of those issues have been ironed out. Just playing the game for me has been very frustrating with all the crashing. Luckily I've already finished the game on consoles, but if this is your first time experience, yeah, it's not been great. Aside from those issues, Red Dead Redemption 2 is undoubtedly an ambitious game on PC that is trying to push the limits of what is possible with modern GPUs, hence why many of the ultra quality options tend to tank performance for minor visual upgrades. I spoke about in the previous video how I feel some of the medium options could easily be upgraded to ultra, with ultra becoming extreme, that's how decent the mid-range options look in my opinion. It'll be interesting to see where PC gaming goes from here and what game will take the crown for best looking graphics after this one. Hopefully we'll get some cool new techniques along the way as well that allow us to play these games at decent frame rates with improved visuals. That's it for this one. If you've enjoyed this series, then please subscribe and give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and also consider supporting us through our merch store where you can get things like this hoodie and this mug or through Patreon where you can come and chat to myself and Steve in our exclusive private Discord server. It's always a lot of fun in there. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. I'll catch you in the next one.